This is Tom Meyer, Superintendent of Bellevue Community School District in Bellevue, Iowa, coming to you with uh, this week's uh, Comet Highlights, the Leave in the Blue update from uh, Monday night's board meeting. Just want to give you a few things that way, and all this information is available on our website under the district site, uh, and you can find it there. You can also find uh, a copy of all this information on the main page under comment highlights you'll see a copy of all this information for you along with a few attachments that way so i want to just start off our consent agenda we had a few uh approvals uh for hires and one of those was stephanie peniston for head girls soccer coach we're starting that this year so uh, stephanie will be our head girls coach gary peniston as our head boys coach so we're moving forward with that and we also hired craig Ryder as head high school girls track coach that way so two things there that people may want to be aware of uh, we also had a curriculum presentation on the on our school district's learning conditions from the state of iowa talked about some different things like that all of our stakeholders and our parents will be getting a survey to complete about our school district specifically coming up uh, later in October or the beginning of November. So be expecting that. That will be sent out on email to parents to complete. And we'll also be giving that to students and staff. They're very similar surveys matching questions in some ways to compare the perceptions of teaching staff versus students versus parents. Are we matching up or do we have completely different perspectives and views on certain things that way? Uh, which deal with our students' education. I'll talk some about certified enrollment. Our enrollment is going up again. Once again, this year it's going up. We will have a, from resident students itself, an increase of around seven or eight students and an increase overall in total amount of students that we are educating with open enrolled students, whole grade sharing students of around 20 students again. So that's a great uh, thing for our district that way. And we're very happy to have new students here at any time. Uh, Penny, Meet, Penny Meetinger, our board secretary, shared the certified annual report, which is due on September 15th. Uh, once again, she does a great job of that and did a great job explaining it again as well. Uh, some, some big things with it that way that you'll see in the notes online are uh, our unspent authorized budget ratio is 23.28%. That is well above the needed area where it needs to be actually the recommended areas between five to 15 and not more than 25%. So we're in that upper realm, which is great. Um, our, uh, our salaries and benefits ratio is in the area where it needs to be as well. Uh, so overall, we're in a very good situation in that regard. Um, we talk significantly about facilities that way, specifically about the elementary building and a renovation or a new building, a separate new building, an attached new building. How are we going to do that? What are we going to do? We've been having facilities advisory committee meetings. Uh, we've had two of those already with OPN architects and their engineers. Uh, we're going to continue that. Some discussion was had, and you can kind of see in the notes of attaching a building to the middle school, high school, a separate building in middle school, high school, or doing something at the current elementary. Doing something at the current elementary would be possible as well. There are some drawbacks to that. It's like there are drawbacks to anything, but one of the major drawbacks we have is the cost, obviously, uh, and costs have increased. Right, remember 2018-19 school year, we had two bond referendums, uh, and they were for 16 uh, for around 16 million and about 14.5 million. They both failed. That same building that we're looking at, whether renovation, whatever the case is, those costs were about the same then as well. That cost is now increased from, let's say, 16 million to 24 to 29 million. Uh, interest rates have went higher, things have went higher, and we're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, having some great discussions about that at the current time, and we'll have more public meetings about this in the fairly near future. I would say the first part of the year being January, if not sooner, just so you're aware, and we'll pass along some other information. So we're looking at all different alternatives of how to do something at the elementary, along with doing pl things other places, such as the middle school and high school campus specifically. But a lot of this will likely be done in phases the way it looks right now, no matter what kind of building we would construct. We're also looking at alternatives for different types of buildings to use. What can we um, utilize for our students that would be best for them in their future as well. So those are some things we also talk about some other needs, uh, other districts referendums. We had some policy updates that are gonna be happening. Those are listed um, on, on our website. 
A lot of that deals with House File 802 and transparency policy updates from curriculum to expression with, uh, with employee expression and different things like that, adapting some other policies, some other information in there from Matt Carver, who was our um, who's a legal expert from the School Administrators of Iowa that shares a lot of valuable information. I have an article from him in there as well uh, to share that we, we utilize his services quite often just on perspectives. Talk about public perceptions of schools. That's the reason we're doing a survey. Uh, and the vast majority, vast majority of Iowans trust Iowa public schools. And there's some data on that that way. It's well over 80% in nearly all areas. Activities updates, we have our, our musical, our high school musical coming up, and we're doing the Little Shop of Horrors, and that is going to be November 4th through 6th. Joe Rowe is the main director. Her assistant is Evan Davies, and just going to be an outstanding uh, production. I think you'll really enjoy it. I encourage you to come out for that. It's Friday and Saturday nights, and then Sunday afternoon. We have volleyball. We're going to host volleyball regionals here uh, next Wednesday, a week from today, uh, against Iowa City Regina. Although tomorrow, Thursday, we play at Northeast for the conference um, uh, in the conference tournament. We had conference cross country last night. Brady Grable won the River Valley Conference. Uh, uh, boys race that way an outstanding job by him you'll see some other things on our website as well about how things are going or on social media about how we did but boys finished fifth um, our junior high boys actually finished second as well and the girls had a strong showing as well some good times uh, and then football plays at Clayton Ridge on Friday if they win that they will play the following Friday in a playoff game at a at a team yet to be determined um, with Iowa 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 Association of School Boards conference is coming up as well. Mike Reed and I are going to be uh, participating in that uh, in the beginning and in the middle of November that way. And then we also had uh, talked about the December board meeting and changing a time with that. There's some other information you'll find in the notes online, um, just some information in general that is interesting to know. But if you have questions or concerns, please give the school a call. But have a great day. Remember, we have parent-teacher conferences this week. That's Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we have a two-hour early dismissal both days. So recognize that. Then no school on Friday. So enjoy those times away. And then October 31st, Halloween Day, we do not have school. That's an all-day professional learning time for teachers. So have a great day.